we don't often think of him in a loving, kind, trusting way. Except, of course, when all the other systems break down and we have nowhere to go. Then when a person dies or when the circumstances end up in disaster, we lose the job, then, of course, we do turn to him. And it is sweet at that time. You know it. I mean, it's dear. It's something real comes into your life. Many of us have had the most realistic times at the time of the death of a mum or a dad or a dear one. Because for that moment, the whole artificial life support system falls away and we see it's useless and we turn to the real source of life. And we go smoothly for a while, but you know it lasts a day or two days or a week. And then you're back on to the artificial life support system of this world. And of course, what we've been saying over the past few weeks is that this has actually had an effect on our own personalities. It actually has perverted them. It's actually perverted our personalities. We have been going this way not only during your lifetime. See, that's not the, just the problem. Your dad was going this way. Your mum was going this way. Your great-grandfather was going this way. Your great-great-grandparents were going this way. Your great Right back to Adam. We have centuries of inbreeding so that we human beings don't any longer have the personality that God gave us. It doesn't even operate the way he meant it to operate. We now have developed within us a deviate kind of strain of humanity whose personality is utterly enslaved to the things we depend upon. And actually, you know it. It's also self-evident. You, you know it fine well. You determine that you will not any longer suffer the resentment and the pain and the anxiety that you suffered last week because you were preoccupied with what people were saying about you in the office. You know how that goes. They talk about you, they criticize you, and you have some sleepless nights, and then you determine, you get yourself gathered together at the weekend, and you determine, I am not going to live under the fear of man. I am not going to live on, dominated by what other people think of me. I'm not going to be spoiled by their criticism. And you know what you do. You then try it. And you know the struggle. It's as if you're opposing reality. You're actually not. You're opposing unreality. But unreality has become so real in our fallen world that it seems like a rock that you can't not move. And you know you go to bed at night and you think, I'm not going to think of what they're saying. I'm not. I'm not. And you go to the office the next day and you think, whether he smiles at me or not, I don't care. Whether she criticizes me or not, I don't care. I will be balanced and I will act from a heart of peace. And you know the battle you have. You just have to cry out, the good that I would, I cannot do. It's as if you inside say, I depend on you, Lord, and your whole being is saying, I depend on you, world. I depend on you, things. I depend on you, job. I depend on you, circumstances. And what we've been saying is, that's the situation most of us find ourselves in. It's not that any of us don't want to do good. I, it seems we all want to live right, you know. We all want to live the right way. And there's something inside that witnesses that is the right way to live. But when we try to live that way, it seems impossible. It seems, well, some of us said, you know, the fates are against me. The whole universe is operating against me. We feel our whole nature even is operating against us. And actually, that is dead right. <laughs>